Oh, welcome back. This is another episode of Sake Sundays. We're going to have some green tea to start it off. I'm Chuck. I'm Meredith. And this is for you from our sponsors, God's Favorite Jewels. Thank you so much. Some turquoise. You're welcome. Thank you. Uh, Tell the people about yourself and what you do. Uh, well, my name is Meredith, or Meridel, in terms of my music name. Um, I'm a musician. I'm from Brooklyn, New York, primarily, and I spent quite a few years in the Bay Area. Um, I've been in L.A. for quite a minute now, so I've just been trying to, you know, work my craft and hopefully go somewhere with it. No, for sure. And actually, you say Meridel. I, yeah. I thought that's what her name was for the first, like, two months, three months that I knew you. I mean, now it is, so but I maybe did. you you were right. You knew before I did. The thing is, it was just because I read it. No. But I had heard everybody say. <laughs> so, I, I remember, do you remember when I said it? Like, I looked at you, I was like, you know, <laughs> I don't know why, but every time I, like, say your name or refer to you, it's as Meridale. And you're just now starting to realize that that ain't quite right. Right. But like you said, it worked out. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, finally changed it because it's been my Instagram bio since, or my Instagram uh, handle since I was, you know, 11, 12 years old. Oh, for real? Oh, yeah. It's been like that forever because um, that's my middle name is Adele. All right. Um, yeah, no, you told me after I was like, you know, I keep calling you married. <laughs> but yeah, I, I officially decided to change it to Meridel because my album was taken off of Spotify by my fucking ex because he like was in control of distro kid shit so um I'm gonna re-release it like taking him off the album um and put it on a bunch of other rappers and shit um but I was like might as well just fully rebrand do a different name because I don't know when I'm gonna have another chance to do that I mean I feel like you can whenever is it always the right time for a rebrand? No. You just can't change your artist name on Spotify, you know? No, gonna, yeah. You have to lose You music. lose everything or re-put it out, and even then, it might take it down. Yeah, no, for sure. Exactly. I tried so- to, like, change my music name, and I put out one song, and then I was like, I'm not about to do this, bro, just because of the fact that I couldn't, like, actually move anything. So I was like, nah, there's way too many songs out. No, exactly. If you've racked up streams, it's totally not worth it. But, like, I lost most of them because oh, yeah. album gone, so. <laughs> um, look, to learning. Oh, exactly. You can do it better now. Rebrands. Yeah. Favorite thing. But, uh, how long have you been in L.A. now? I've been in L.A. It'll be three years in July. So, like, two and a half, a little bit over. You making it? Fuck yeah. No, I love it here. Um... It's not anything like I thought it would be. Like, L.A. really the most interesting place, like, for anyone who doesn't live here. It's just fucking ginormous, and it's not, like, a continuous city. It's kind of, like, a bunch of different hubs of shit. No, yeah. Um, whereas I feel like New York is, like, a giant, kind of very consolidated city. L.A. is, like, spread out a bunch of little mini cities throughout. No, yeah. <laughs> a bunch of different places, but they're all L.A. County. And it's going to be an hour drive. <laughs> you know, yeah. um, That's the part that had me, because I, when I first moved to California, I was like, I moved to L.A. And I was like, wait, I'm not. I'm in Orange County. All right, cool. And <laughs> so then I moved to L.A. County, mm-hmm. and everybody was like, I've never heard of where you live at. And I was like, what? No, it's insane. People don't leave, bro, at all. It's it's insane. But, I mean, I kind of get it because since I've been here, I I barely left. Um, I don't know. I found, like, such a ginormous community, uh, both within, like, the R&B hip-hop scene, but also freshly into more of this, like, indie alternative scene. Um, and then I'm also just, like, super into EDM. So I do a lot of raving at all the undergrounds in L.A., so... I'm very much in that community, too. So I just have found so many cool-ass music people that I don't know that I'll ever be leaving. What's the craziest thing that happened at a rave? You know, I will say, bro, a few weeks ago, I went to this um, camping rave. like uh, It's like a mini festival, but thrown by, you know, a bunch of smaller artists and shit. And this one kid fucking OD'd. And- no. Bro, it was so bad. That's like the first time I seen it so in front of me, and I literally had to administer Narcan to this no. fucking dude. 
and do chest compressions, bro. It was scary. And it was because it was so fucking far out, we had to wait like 35 minutes for the ambulance to show up. I mean, up. I feel like 35... That's a long time. At least they came. Yeah, I know. At least they came. I, at least they yeah. came. Well, shouts to you. Saving lives. Yeah. Saving um, lives out here. I'm glad I did. Um, But, you know, sad that I had to. But... Yeah. Yeah, I mean, all that shit stays happening. Other than that, you know, there's always just going to be the crackheads that are off the crack, especially. <laughs> so. <laughs> no, no. Um, Being, like, around, uh, what should we call it? Dirty laundry? Mm-hmm. Whenever I'm out there, I'm just like, well. There's always one. Whatever's about to happen. Like, <laughs> no, <for real. laughs> it's like, you just know, walking down the street, you're about to see something. All right, good, bad, funny, I don't know. But something that I don't expect is about to happen. No, it's not awesome. The rave is always like that. I feel like it's, like, hard to even, like, pick, like, the craziest thing because all the crazy is very normalized. Like, you no, know, the furries are out to play, you know, like... <laughs> No, yeah. Uh, very, very different place than most music scenes. Oh, what's been your favorite I uh, connection musically at any of the places that you you know? Um, that is so fucking hard to say. I feel like I've met so many fucking awesome people. Definitely the best people I consistently meet are within the EDM community, even though that's, like, not the kind of music that I personally make. Yeah. Um, I mean, I kind of do. I'm dipping my toes in it, so I'll maybe. About to ask might be some stuff coming. Like, there might be some stuff coming. Like? Um, right now, I'm, I got a bunch of, like, R&B shit on the line. I do have this one, like, house remix that me and my friend Kevin are going to be dropping in June. Um, but honestly, I don't really know. Right now, I'm kind of on like a record a bunch of singles and just drop them in like yeah. a a Tierra Whack kind of way where she was doing it for a minute. Where I'm just gonna drop a bunch of different shit. Like it's oh, not yeah. gonna be related to one another. Like, cause I don't really know what I want to do. So I feel like I just want to start to release a bunch of singles and see what gets the best like feedback. Like, well, I feel like the as best response. A creative, sometimes you just want to make stuff. So it's like oh, exactly. Do you want me to wait until I have a bunch of stuff that has a through line and is similar to call it body of work? Mm-hmm. Or let's just have fun. Like, no, I don't want to be locked down to one thing right now. I feel like and there's no point. Like, unless you have some massive fucking following that follows you because this? of the type of music yeah. that you make, there's no reason to put yourself into a box. And even when you do, it's still not a necessary. You don't have to, especially okay. if you like kind of start like that. Um, right. I mean, look at SZA's fucking most recent album. It's done incredible numbers in a lot of fucking ways, and the entire thing is like eight fucking different genres. No, it's so beautiful. Like, even Drake has showed us. Like, <laughs> bro, you don't have to. You don't even got to talk to say. <laughs> yeah, exactly. exactly. <laughs> you don't even got to talk to say if you don't want to. Like, yeah. you just got to make a good song. Is like no, exactly. Whatever the fuck resonates, um, because that's also just what's gonna end up being like the best music. I feel like the more that I try to be something, the less that I'm able to be that. So like, I really just kind of like gotta let it flow. With music, what do you feel like it is that you do want to like have either be your brand or image or display? Um, I mean, I really. Just my my biggest goal is to be seen as someone similar to Mac Miller was viewed within the community, where like everybody just fucks with you. Everybody knows that you're a good person, that you're like reliable, that you're a dope writer. Like I, I mean, me, I want to be known as a dope singer rather than a rapper, you know. But um, yeah, just to be kind of like a staple good person, and that's why like I feel like. For me, building those communities is, like, absolutely the most important thing to me. Even if I don't make it big in music, I'm making it big by, like, meeting such dope people and having, like, good-ass relationships with people that are looking out for you and you're looking out for them and you're creating together. Like, that's something special. See, we're going to have our first shot to that. Fuck yeah. And I knew there was a reason I liked you. (laughs) You just said that some better for me than I could say for myself. <laughs> this is for real. Mac is like, whenever I just think about artists, you know, I don't necessarily think about who do I want to sound like because you said, I don't even rap. But Mac is, you feel me, a standard. It's about what they represent. Exactly. Know? And so when I think of that, I think of Mac like different sounds, 
different talents. Exactly. The most diverse artist has the j- fucking just biggest discography. It's never ending. Especially when you go on to SoundCloud. And Bro, find once you find... Like, what you, you know, Larry like, Fisherman and like exactly. his hidden tapes exactly. and stuff. Exactly, and never like, ends. There's just more and more and more and more. If you yeah. follow those Reddits, they're finding new shit literally all the yeah. time. I'd be on YouTube um, and I just see new music pop up. And the thing is, family milking that. Oh my, like, like, who's getting paid? That's what I'll be thinking. I'll be like, who decided to drop this? Aces got dropped. I was like, but <laughs> 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 uh, it's just every time I hear a song though, regardless yeah. of the sound or what, it's just the level of honesty that i feel like he brought to everything no he stayed real within his relationship he was, crazy with his shit. He was still <laughs> he, he, he was keeping it 100 he so. feel me? i you talk about this song like loud yeah. shouts to mac shouts to what you just said shouts i just to take Jane. this as a whole shot i've literally never not, socket? no never yeah no so it's a wine so yeah. it's not you feel me like an actual shot. liquor shot yeah, yeah no, no. It's, it's smooth nice it's like you'll like it you'll like it and actually i've never had this one right here this is some hakusuru and it's a draft sake it's like beer wine that's what i <laughs> it tastes way better than what that sounds like when you say beer <laughs> wine but i hear you you feel me no it's way better it's super subtle yeah no that's pretty good that one's a little stronger than the one that we usually have is uh yeah. sake high Mm-hmm. That one's kind of sweet. This is a little sweet, but that one's less as tangy as this and has that bitter after. Yeah. Sake High doesn't have as much of that bitter after. Kind of sweeter. Yeah. But most of them are pretty much like that. Yeah. You get some of them warm. You could warm any of them, technically, but some of them are like supposed, supposed to, to be warm. warm. Yeah. And some are either than some. I've had a sake bomb, but I've never had just the sake by itself. I hate beer, so I'm not. I just. Was uh, it gross to you? I didn't like it because I don't yeah. like beer. And even but like beer is different. I felt pressured. You know, everybody else was doing one. I was like, crazy. That's how I started to like beer. I felt pressured because <laughs> everybody was drinking it. Oh, man. Like, like, people used to be on my head. At least on people my head. Don't bother me. I'm literally like, ah, I, don't, I don't like beer. I'm just a girl. I used to like, when I first started drinking, I was the person who tried to, yo, you come on, just like. People come do to me, like, here, just drink a bit. I'm like, nah, you just made me get drunk. I don't, nah, you could drink a beer. I'm like, pussy. The thing is, they understood why afterward, because like, it didn't matter if it was a beer, half a beer. I would pee. And that's why I would say no. It wasn't even because I didn't necessarily. Of course, I didn't like it. Makes sense, bro. It's causing it bread water. My stomach would just be like, nah. It's nasty, bro. Nah. It's wrong. Oh, I got to college and everybody was like, are you just not going to drink? <laughs> I was like, ah. when it's the only option. That's the only time I'll drink it. And exactly. So, but I remember the first time I had a cold beer after it had been like six months. Yeah. Oh, this wasn't that bad. No, bro. I will say every like three to six months, I'll have a strange craving for a cold Corona and I'll get one and it kind of hits. You just need one. Just one. one. Cold, even if you're eating a burger or some fries or like some wings no every once in a while that shit hits yeah but i never finished the whole thing that's my problem i'll drink like a third of it i'm like all right that was my taste yeah, that's how you know it was literally just <laughs> a little i needed to be satisfied <laughs> uh what is your favorite drink my favorite i drink a shit ton of wine i will say but i don't know that it's not good. i'm not sure if it's because it's my favorite drink or because it's cheap as shit because i go to trader joe's and they got like fucking 50 different five dollar wines and they're good all right um, thank you for the tip oh i'll send you a list of them <laughs> if you need any recommendations i've had them all um i started going into the uh what is it it's like the ah, this is a grocery store but it's like not a ralph's or but they're everywhere they're like the little the off-brand grocery store you feel me this is not trader joe's no nah. I can't remember what it's called. I have no fucking idea. There's a few. But they always have, like, hella wines for you. I literally only go to Trader Joe's for anything now. Bro, I went to fucking Rouse for, like, four things. Four things. You said that with some disdain. And it was... <laughs> it was 23... Fuck Rouse. 23, 23 fucking dollars for, like, four items. I got pudding. I got Doritos. I got a pack of salami. 
What was you thinking when you were picking like, these things up? Because none of them had no connectors. <laughs> Putting a salami in the same cart, like, this wasn't grocery shopping. I only got four things. But this was not a meal together. I was not... <laughs> he was like, this sounds good. <laughs> That's exactly what happened. This sounds good. <laughs> Me and my friends were going to the park to paint, and I was high as fuck. So oh. I, went, I went in, and I was like, let's see what looks good. <laughs> but that, that price made me angry, bro. Oh, my God. The fucking bag of Doritos, it wasn't even the big, big bag. It was almost $7. No, I'm sick for you. It was, it was, I'm sick for you. Know, you. Size bag, I'm positive. It was three twenty five. And this is just the four years ago. And how at least a third of the top was just there. It's fucking air, bro. <laughs> and they don't even cheese them like they used to. Like, they be stinging. I've never cheese. lit a Dorito on fire. No. Yo, next what time you get a Dorito, nothing. <laughs> Actually, I have because I remember trying to cook them in a campfire and it and burn. It took so long for anything to happen, and once it does, it just starts to like. Do you know apart. Bobby Lifesavers? Yeah. If you fucking bite down on them in a dark enough environment, you can see them spark. That's why. They have like some fucking chemical in them that reacts and does like a little light. I feel like that's scarier than the Doritos. Well, my boyfriend told me that. I was like, I don't think I'm going to be eating lifesaver gums anymore. I'm going to eat them anymore, but I don't want to slap. I'm never going to see them. I'm getting some. Yo, you know what I figured out is like crack. <laughs> <laughs> for real. I've been trying to figure out that for a while. Look, if you want some crack without having, you know, the adverse side effects, <laughs> it's probably not as much energy, but you'll get a sugar rush. It's <laughs> close. Fruit snacks. Oh, bro. No, I went through a fucking Welch's few months of, of extreme buying. And they've saved the thing for race. They're still fucking... And delicious. they still taste the thing. No, they're delicious. They're... I'm a gummy bear bitch though. That's like my gummy bears thing. and like sour worms. Mm -hmm. Trolleys. But once the thing is, it's like we grow. When's the last time? But I don't. I now I'm saying when's the last time? I guess it hasn't been that long. But like I was probably like 25 when I was like, "Yo, this is the best thing I've had in so long," and it was a simple fruit snack. And I said crack because I went back and got three more packs. <laughs> I've been doing a juice grind, bro. Like, since I quit nicotine, I drink, an, like, a fucking avid amount of juice. For real? I can't you, stop. You, like, make your own juices or you just no, buy juice? Like, just fucking cartons of juice. I can't stop. I got peach mango. I got I orange, like strawberry, banana. I flavors, though. There are. I can't so, stop. I can't even pick no more. I just be like... That's why I get, like, two or three. I, I actually have a juice problem. Yes. That look can sound good. I'm just I'm gonna get this one, bro. Because if I look at all of these, like, it's gonna take me ten minutes no, to actually no. decide which one I want. <laughs> no, juice and popsicles. That's, that's, that's what's replaced my You know how I figured out I like popsicles? Mm -hmm. A four-year-old and her sister. That was what they would get for anything. Like, no, that's me. To chill them out or calm them down or reward. And so one day I was like, let me, why didn't I realize these were so good, bro? Like, no, I got addicted to them this year because I got them while I was hungover and they saved my fucking life, bro. Yeah. And now it's like, uh, it's my favorite snack. This my man keeps his fucking freezer like stocked with popsicles. What if you made your own popsicles for after a hangover? That was made out of like hangover cure. That would be hella good. That would be just, yo. That's that's good. Business idea. product for anybody out here who's hangover trying to popsicles. make a popsicle brand. There you go. Yeah, Adult popsicles to cure hangovers. Pedialyte, but better. Popsicles, you know what I mean? <laughs> See, she didn't <laughs> for you. Uh, don't say I ain't never do nothing for you. <laughs> Free ideas. All right. What are you waiting, not waiting, what are you, like, excited to release next musically? Um, I am kind of on a crossroads right now. A few things. I got two songs ready to drop. I just need to shoot a cover for one of them, yeah. and then it'll be out and ready. It's really the covers holding me back right now. Um, but you I got two... To do? For the covers? Yeah. yeah. I just need the fucking time and, like... Sit down and do it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, next weekend, I'm gonna try and carve some fucking time out and make that happen. Um, so those will be dropping. Those are both like R and B songs. They're both kind of like a slower moment, but I'm really proud of them. They're they're dope. Um, and then I need to record, finish recording like one that I got on a demo. And that's also going to be coming out. Um, and then I'm re-recording this album. But yeah, it's a bunch of shit that's like half done. And honestly, I just need to get this shit done and out. And I need to stop like 
wasted so much time on it because I really just want to get on to new shit. Like, I've written so much sit- shit since this. You're like, trying to not do any of the new stuff until you finish? I've been doing a little bit here and there because I don't want to, like, keep myself, like, trapped in a hole. But also, like, if I start working on too much new shit, I will never finish the well, shit. So it's um a tough little crossing right now. I'm trying to, like, figure it out. But single will be out in the next six weeks. Another single will be out in a few weeks after that. I'm probably going to drop them relatively close together. Um, and then, like I said, I'm dropping that, like, house song in June, which I'm pretty excited for. Summertime, um, switched up. Yeah, exactly. It's a little summertime moment song. Um, very cute. It's called Strawberry Wine. It's, you know, no, I saw you wine. post about it. Did you post about it? Probably. I posted something about it. I don't remember. Probably on my story. I've seen something. Fuck yeah. Yeah, I'm not sure. But... I'm excited. And my homie that made the song with me, um, and he's the one who like made my whole album, my friend Kevin, he's a dope ass producer, but he kind of transitioned. He doesn't really produce, but especially R&B Which shit. Is not- uh, he just makes EDM music. Like, he makes house and shit, like, and he DJs, like he's a DJ. Like that's, yeah. that's his thing now. But he's coming out to LA. He actually landed this afternoon. Okay. Um, so we're going to be working a lot this week. So I'm sure we'll be making some new shit that I'll be dropping. Um, cause we, when we get together, we work and we work fast. Like we, what's the point that you made a song? Like an hour. I mean, and in terms of just rec- like recording, I went to the spot and I got three done in an hour, which was, fucking really good that's that, crazy and they said they never seen it i've seen never it. seen that i've never heard that that's yeah. crazy those are those and those are the three singles that i'm dropping i just dropped one of them i'm like, excited I just... now <laughs> <laughs> i heard you want to listen do you feel me? i did them all i did them all in two takes i like did a main take i did a harmony take and we were like let's go so um, in order to do something my bad finish with no no go go ahead go ahead oh, in order to do that do you practice before you go to the studio um, e- yes and no. Not in a way that I, like, literally, like, practice. Like, this is studio, how I'm going to do this. But what I do do is I tend to perform my songs a bunch oh, of times before, before I even record them. Yeah. I know I might have the demos done, but, yeah. like, I perform them a bunch, and then I know them super well. Um, And then I record that shit. That's still um, crazy. But, yeah, I'm pretty quick with it. Yeah, no, I'm ready to go. How, have you done that with any of your other songs that are out? Like, record it? Yeah, like yeah, no. 10 minutes? A bunch of, <laughs> that's, like, a bunch of my album. Like, literally, most of my album is, like, very few takes on most of the songs. Um, it was made very simply in the studio's garage. And, I mean, we made a shit ton of songs. We made, like... Because we had a whole other album that we ruled out, plus a bunch of other songs we crossed off. We I want to say we made some, like, 40 songs in the course of, like, a few weeks, where we were just in the studio till, like, 4 a.m. all the time, working, that's working, working. Crazy. And he makes everything, and I mean, like, he, he plays drums, he, he plays bass, he does piano, so he, he, just have he fun plays then. guitar, he does everything, he's a real producer, you know what I mean? So, do you feel like you were, like, driven to keep up with him? Or oh, we just, just work so, <laughs> I, I miss him so much, because he, he lives in the Bay Area, um, and I have never worked with anybody like I work with Kev. It's just, like, straight comfort. Like, we just, like, get each other. He knows how to make me comfortable, how to, like, make the music for me. Um, and I just, like, don't feel any stress or judgment from him ever. And it makes the process, like, so fucking easy. Oh, this, yeah. dude, this dude is a dumbass, though, and I will say that. Like, he, those 40 songs that we had, gone. <laughs> gone. Because this dude decided to play drums at the beach, like, in the water, and set up his laptop to, like, film it. <laughs> Literally a wave just came and just... I would never in my life think of using my computer as a camera at the beach. <laughs> like, I mean, I won't say at the beach. What this man On was, the beach, was thinking, maybe. I'm not sure. Near a wave, my computer is not leaving my hands fucking insane. near the wave. Um, yeah, and thankfully we had uh, taken my album off of it and put it onto somebody else's computer the day before. I would have lost. So he was prepared. Uh, a little, a little credit. He was prepared. But yeah, <laughs> um, all we got is them SoundCloud demos. No, now, no, oh. no stems. RP, bro. <laughs> That's something that I always hate. Is like I have this song that I love, mm-hmm. but I have stemmed it out and sent it to somebody. 
and all I have is their version of it. And the vocals yep. were like EQ, where everything was just muffled. It's like I had his stems, but he printed them. You feel me? So it was like it was oh, just it's fucked. it was just lost. I, I cry like- every time I hear this song. And I'm like, damn, this shit is so hard. Belt. And the reason I cry is because I had two features. Mm-hmm. And like one of them... Just fucked it. Isn't really a rapper. So it's like, to get him to redo his shit... I haven't even talked to my mans in like 10 years probably at this point. So yeah. the song that's crazy to say. Because the song is still hot. It sounds like it could have came out now. Yeah. That's crazy. But yeah, no. Drop it. It's out. It's on SoundCloud. Oh, okay. Yeah, you feel me? And that's why I hear it every every it so now and again. Yeah. And I'll just be like, damn, this was a banger. <laughs> Could have been a banger. I don't even know where the beat is no more. I don't know what it was called, who made it, like nothing. It's, like, it's uh, one of those. I feel like, you. No, I got, I got lost thoughts. I got so much fucking lost to the wind. I can't tell you. I don't know his character as an artist, though, because it's like, you just stop being so precious about the work. No, exactly. You just make more and more and more and more and more. You, you know, know I feel like at the coming. beginning, everything's special because you only and have not to say it's not special when you you feel me, but exactly, it seems so special when you start. Especially because you see your growth. You know, you see how much better right. you've gotten since like you started, so and you better. know, and you know that that growth is going to continue. So even if you yeah. lose those things, like Once you're going to make something five times yeah. better yeah. eventually. Like, like I think of this shit Drake said. I was literally thinking about this like, yesterday on my way to where I don't know why. Do you ever just have song lyrics that don't pertain to nothing going on? Just in your head. Oh, constantly. Or just like a loop, because like, I just kept thinking, or sometimes it's not even the exact bar, but it's like. No, I just get lines stuck in my head. That line. Yeah. Uh, he said, I lost some of my hottest verses down in Cabo. So if you find a Blackberry with the side scroll, so that motherfucker to any rapper that I know. Because yeah. they need it much more than I ever will. I got new shit. I'm getting better still. Little niggas split my name in their verses, because their girlfriends put my ass okay. on the pedestal. It's like. That shit was just in my head. Just the yeah. one line. But you see how I just spit all the bars? You feel mm-hmm. me? The whole verse was there, but I just kept thinking of the they need it much more than what I ever will. I got new shit. I got yeah. that still. Yeah, like, the exactly. lost Now look at where he at, bro. Like, he he could have been sick about that whole... You know how many songs is in a phone? No. it's I've I've had that happen. I lost my phone at Rolling Loud. And I, I lost... I lost, a lot I lost, like, 150 fucking songs on my notes. I know. I had kept ignoring it for months. I was just like ignoring, like your 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 shit's out of space. Your shit's out of space. I'm like, I don't want to spend the two dollars. I will forever spend those fucking two dollars. Uh, not gonna lie. Once I actually bought the space, yeah. I was like, man, this shit is losing that losing that phone was a time in so many fucking oh. ways, bro. It was at Rolling Loud Bay Area, 2017. And I lost my phone and my friends in the same fucking mosh pit. XXX, bro. No, that Because that shit was crazy. Um, but then I was alone for the rest of the day. And I was fucking... I was, <laughs> How do you find I was... I never did. I was... I was, I was candy flipping. I'm sorry to laugh. <laughs> and this, it's so good. I was candy flipping. So I was on fucking acid and molly. No. I was on one, bro. And then I found... So you these- weren't even tripping. Oh, it was tripping, but she well, wasn't tripping. <laughs> it was so, it was so. <laughs> I met a bunch of these girls, and they were fucking ballet dancers for the SF Ballet, and they gave me co, they gave me copious amounts of cocaine. No. And then I ended up getting cracked up, and it was up in um, it's in the Bay Area in where is it fucking called? It's where like Google is, and so there's these all Google right. bikes all over the place, and I fucking I cracked out. I like took a fucking Google bike, biked it like a few miles to the Caltrain station, and then walked three and a half miles home from the Cal- Caltrain station. And I still don't know how I knew where I was going. I mean, had you ever been there before? Up there, nah. <laughs> <laughs> Mountain View, that's where it is. You, and- you probably asked people. Bro, I don't know. All I remember is riding that bike. <laughs> I guess if he was riding a bike, <laughs> I don't know. But I know but, if, I know? if I ever get lost, shouts out the SF ballet. Ballerinas go crazy. Hey, they be on, that's crazy to think they be on stage. <laughs> Backstage. <laughs> 
But that's how the movements are so poignant. You feel me? They feel every muscle in they shit. Oh, God. Oh. Another shot. Oh, another shot. Oh, you said you saw X. X, X. I don't know why you said the name like that. Yeah. I said X, 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 X. Um, that is. I saw X, 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 Juice World, and Ski Mask, like, all at the same fucking Rolling Loud. Yeah, and only Ski Mask. I was about to say. And I just saw him at Rolling Loud. Again? Again. Oh, that's what um, um, Last, like, a few Sundays ago. Yeah, it was. And it's been, last, what, Barely. Years? So it's been six years since. Three, four. Oh. The year to actually sp- is, oh, is already going. Oh, yo, oh. Bro, I'm already like so seven six years. months into this year. In my- <laughs> That's insane. But seven years the ex has been gone. The That's part- so long. You think Dre had anything to do with it? Yeah. I think it's crazy. <laughs> just how it's like, wasn't he supposed to be called to court? Yeah, it was yeah. a mess. And so it's like, I'm not saying it. yes, but that. The fact that there was enough reason to call someone to court... It's a little fishy. It's real suspect, bro. And the fact that... I hate the fact that I'm even saying all this right now, but, like, I didn't even expect it. And it, I was late to it. So it was, like, yeah. even just this past year. No, it's so random in a way. Like, I didn't really find out about any That's of that. That's what I'm saying. And then after the fact that I'm like, yo, wait, hold up. How do we just bypass all this shit, no, bro? Exactly. Like, hold no, up. I haven't really talked about it. I'm not sure how it got, like, brushed over. Yeah. Because. the time that he died. Because I just didn't. I don't know. I didn't hear much about that. I feel like most of the news, honestly, that I heard when he died was like a lot of negative shit about him. No, that's a lot, a lot of, of that. Smashing him. Yeah, it all kind. Of, I feel like a lot of shit came to light. Like a lot of people about his character he blew up. I mean, his music blew up because he died like in a posthumous way, you know. Um, and I just feel like, yeah, I mean, he did do some <laughs> right some festivities. No, yeah, you no know, beating the shit out of pregnant girlfriend never never good. <laughs> No, not great for for business. Anything, um, business life. <laughs> he, 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 he what are you gonna do? He's dead. No, so sure, but no, I feel like I don't even know. Cause that's what I think what made it easy <laughs> for that. Like, no, exactly. You feel me? It's hard to say. <laughs> it's just too I, I forgot. And and he fucking tried to kill a man in jail because he thought he was gay and he was looking at him. So you know he. Uh, I love his music. I'll get lit forever. And, you know, Not us and, at all. And, see, I, I, have, <laughs> I have a special rule, personally. I might get heat for this. But my my personal rule is if somebody's dead or in jail for a very oh, long time right. and they're never seeing my money, I'm going to stream their music. Because, bitch, I don't get Michael Jackson ain't never seeing my, my point zero zero seven cents of a stream. Um, and off the wall, hits, and never fails me, so, I, I, oh shit, turn off. Oh, fuck. Damn it. Battery? No. It pauses every 20 minutes, oh. and I know that. I'm usually prepared. Not your These, hand. I forgot, and also, the conversation's just flowing. No. So, it good. probably stopped, like, eight minutes ago, and now it's letting me know. Rip. And we still got these. It's okay. So, now we have to use them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, hopefully they look good. No, but, I'll be straight. It's just um, blurry as fuck on the actual phone. I'm not worried. That's so much. Sad. But yeah, Michael Jackson, my favorite artist, and I will say, I you know I've seen the documentary. I I believe it's true. What? Uh, that Michael Jackson was you know killed. Oh no, a questionable um pedophile. Oh. But you know, he... but the music's so good. It I think it outweighs it. I'm gonna be so real. <laughs> 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 the reason I'm laughing so much is because your face when you saw my face because I wasn't about to say too much you feel me it's just the fact you already know why look we ain't got to say nothing bro because I hear you and the more I look at it and just being a grown up and like just thinking about what the shit look like nigga it look horrible regardless of whether you did it or not why was they you there in your house, nigga? Like, you know, that that man dead. So no. um he lost his life early. So I you, you about to say he was killed. <laughs> nah I mean he killed himself, really. You think he did? Yeah, because I mean not on purpose. He just really, really fucked with that laughing gas and like Oh the thing was it laughing gas? It was anesthesia. He was like addicted to was- anesthesia and so he was used because he like couldn't sleep, so he was using anesthesia like every night. And, like, they tell you when you go into surgery, you might die from anesthesia. So, like, I mean, I knew. He just didn't give a fuck. He was addicted to it because he got so many fucking surgeries. 
fentanyl. The doctor had administered him fentanyl, like a liquid dose. It was uh, mm -hmm. supposed to be administered by a doctor, but they gave it to him at the crib. It was anesthesia. I mean, what, yeah, they did give it to him in the crib, right. but it was anesthesia. And he just yeah. never fucking woke up. Um, Regardless. So, but, so, yes, the doctor killed him, but also he killed himself. Um, but, yeah, um, some good-ass music. You know, you never want to see those streams. Shout to Michael. For real. Uh, have you heard any of the, like, new versions of his shit? What do you mean? There was this mashup of Michael and Prince Ooh. with AI trap beats. That sounds questionable but could be fire and one a mashup of those two was like why but not because is you everybody knows they don't like each other it's like nobody you know you don't do that it seems yeah. disrespectful but i just read the title and it said like dark trap i was like nigga what and then I saw like a picture of both of them, like how you know, a cover with them like facing off. Yeah. I was like, this, whatever. I played it. This shit was slapping, literally slapping. Hey. Like, trap beats to their shit. Michael Jackson never fails. And it's like, it. you just gotta, you just gotta look it up. I promise you, you won't fail. I'm, it's, I'm it's happy. I'll look into it. Turn the speed up. Listen to it on one point five. Okay, fire. And then that shit go, cause like. Hell yeah. I wasn't even listening to the music. I was like doing stuff and it was in the background. And it, you feel me? And I stopped. I looked at my phone like four times. Like, I'm just, what? This is, all right, let me like it. Like, I got to make sure I like this one. Like, no, I'll, I'll have to try that. No, oh, it might throw you. It's probably going to throw you. No, I'll probably like it though. Like, that's what I'm saying. That's like what EDM is. It's mapping up things and making them fast. So, like, wait. Hold on. Yeah. And he's like, yo, this is a slap. This is a slapper. Whoever did this, shouts to you. Have you heard any of the AI? Like, I've heard a lot of AI music. Yeah. I've heard a lot of this. What you think? Um, most of it ends up being pretty trash. For real? But I feel like once in a while, there's something that's like so believable. It's genuinely like, you heard fine. Who's, who's someone you heard like done well? A lot of, I feel like so many people have done Drake. So I feel like the yeah. Drake ones get done best just because. There's so many of them. There's so many. The that, yeah, exactly. Yeah. I've heard some funny fucking ones. Oh, I heard the Drake one and it has future on it. Yeah. And the weekend. And it was actually, I liked it better than, I liked it. Like, no, exactly. It was, it was actually hard. I've honestly liked a lot of the AI Drake shit more than anything he's put out in recent years. And that was one thing that I was like, yo, bro. Because they're this kind of really going hard. back on his old sound. Yeah, and mixing it with the new mm -hmm. beat stuff. And this was my question. I was like, yo, is this AI production too? Like... Did AI write it? Yeah, yeah. It's like, you could just write it and say it and then have the AI copy you. What I if feel you like you have AI write it? I feel like most of it is human written AI so? performed. Yeah. But there's definitely ones that are fully AI, and I, I feel like those are the shitty ones. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. just, they make no fucking sense. Oh, no, yeah. They're not really funny. They're just, and they're not good either. So it's just like. Because I've, I've tried to use it. Like, I fucked around with Chad GBT a couple times Chad trying to see if it could make you any fucking song. Write the song, yeah. It doesn't. It's, it's shitty. I, I used it for, that was all right. I use it for synonyms, helps, like, yeah. certain rhymes, like, near rhymes and shit yeah. like that, because it'll give me shit that, like, won't come up no. with like, those rhymes. One of the times I tried so to find words, the rhyme of words that it gave me was all slant rhymes. So I was like, nigga, I could have did that. <laughs> like, I made some big, like... No, but, um, I don't know. I feel like also it gets better if you use it a lot. Like, I've been no, using it gets a shit ton. No, it gets like, what you're looking for. Because it came out, like, six months before I graduated college. Yeah. And so I used it for everything for in real? college. Like, I didn't, I didn't do a single reading once ChatGPT came out. Because I would just put in, like, 40-page legal oh, documents. Did did and I would say, read and summarize it for me. Give me the important points. And it turns a 40-page document into one page. I'm and so glad you just said that. I'm a shit. It's so helpful. I have um, you can put in. Yo, can you put in slides like from a PowerPoint? You, as long as there's words, you can copy that. Yeah, it's so fucking helpful. Um, yeah, Thank it's you. You it's. See the, you see this a little? Yeah, it's getting DVDs. It's mastermind. Thank you. It's it's fucking dope. Um, very much recommended for that. I it literally wrote so many of my um 
Well, I was, I was, <laughs> I was looking I, right. Just say I wrote some things that were very helpful. No, yeah. Uh, you know, I was I was studious before then, but no, I hear you. sometimes you need some fucking corners to cut. Um, and it was way too easy. But yeah, that shit that shit's fire. Um, and the more I use it, the more I know what the fuck I'm talking about. Wow. And recently, I've been using it to write all my cover letters for all these jobs I'm applying yeah. to. Oh. Like. <laughs> I'm slow. There, I'm using it to make graphic designs and hashtags. What is it doing? There's no way. You're making hashtags. It has never-ending uses. <laughs> Honestly, I use it as a like, Google a lot of the time, too, because it'll just give me more interesting, consolidated. Oh, no, yeah. You know, one thing that it did that I was like, yo, what the fuck? I was trying to make a description for something, and I put in the name of the person and the name of the business. And it generated the right IG handle. Oh, you know what cool ass thing it did for me is uh, figure out meals. You can put in a bunch of ingredients that you have in your fridge, and then it'll just give you back meals that you can make with That's it. That's dope. It'll give you recipes. It's literally such a fire tool. I love chat I've already used it, and I like it, but you just... None there's, of the ways you just said I thought about. There's It's really <laughs> never-ending. Like, I didn't... I didn't realize how useful of a tool it was mm-hmm. either for like my first six months until I really started to like think about just, just all the different areas that I have questions. Yeah. And dude, it's the best thing ever. Oh, there's Truly. another app that I got on my phone where it's similar, mm-hmm. but it'll, uh, anything you write, you could just say you just write a, a list of thoughts. Yeah. You could turn it into a professional sentence well that's how i wrote a lot of essays um you put in your thoughts i would would write my turn this into exactly i had i'd have an outline so it was was original thought i'd so like you know like say it's like two three pages of like straight notes and outline and then i say turn this into a seven page essay right and it does yeah and then you know you still have to kind of go through and you know a lot of it before that shit even happened i had a teacher tell me that one of my essays was some shit that was generated i didn't write it it's like 2000. Well, they can't prove it too. 15? If you've if you've rewritten a lot of it, they can't tell. Well, I didn't even do it. It's just the fact you feel me that this is actually a thing. It is easy to do now. Everybody this is does back it. in the day. It's not even that. It was. It's not. It wasn't impossible then, but it wasn't easy. I was like, it's awesome, but it's also problematic. Like I feel like the switch to technology, particularly in education, is like and that's kind of terrible because that we're worried about. Yeah, because my college experience was so easy because of it. Like I especially during the fall on COVID, bro. huh? I feel like it was already too easy. Though. Yeah, and it's even easier now. I. Sh- I got through with some, you know, special, um, skills, <laughs> especially because it was all online, like, it was too easy, um, way too easy to do anything. See, I feel like um, people said, it, like... To the point that all the professors became okay with it and stopped considering things cheating and just started considering things whoa. to be, like, they would just change their... Yeah, they would be like, yeah, like, they would expect it, so... Um, at least they were doing something and, like, adjusting in some way. Because, like, with people adapting in this way and doing stuff easier, mm-hmm. cool, that's now. But this is when I realized we had a real problem in higher education. Yeah. And with this being higher education, I was like, we got a problem in education. And I came out of college, and because I cut all those fucking corners, and I had You have really a bigger things, understanding. I just... But I didn't learn anything. And me no, and my friends exactly. were all at the same point, because... Especially because we were doing it all online. A lot of classes, we were, like, essentially teaching to ourselves, and, like, we didn't really understand a lot yeah. of it. They were made super easy. Like, we literally didn't learn shit, bro. No. Like, I have this little piece of paper that says communications. Yeah. If you ask me to list five fucking communications theories... Uh, this is the thing, though. Oh, it's wow. Even when I was in school, it's yeah. like, what was I about to say? Damn it, I just lost it. Oh, the curriculum didn't even update. Never. It didn't update. Like, I was just trying to find study notes. You feel me? Like flashcards. I was trying to make flashcards and find flashcards. Mm-hmm. And I found a website where you could find your school in classes that they had there. And you're able to find other people's notes and flashcards. That's dope. I found the same class, same professor, 10 years before. No, exactly. I found that on Quizlet a million times. Yeah. I Everything is I didn't go to work. class for the rest of the year. Exactly. For the rest of, I just would go there. 
look at other people's notes. I will look at my homework and answer the questions. And a lot of classes are also just booth. Like, I took one philosophy class, and it was three times a week, and it was an 8 a.m., so I deadass did not go. I didn't go for probably, like, seven weeks. You're lucky. And I showed up. To, early was attendance-based. And I, I, oh, it definitely <laughs> was, but I was like, I just prayed because it, no. it was only 10% off. You never my, met me. I think it was somebody. 10% off my grade for, for attendance. Yeah. So I was like, I'll take a 90. I'll go fuck. Um, so I literally oh, never went. Oh, top percent 10? And so then I literally took, yeah, exactly. It would just take 10% off. I, and then I came in for the like, final. I taught myself the, after. huh? But yeah, I taught myself that entire fucking class in less than 72 hours very easily. Um, Why... Why am I able to learn this class in three days? If it's three days a week for five months, the math doesn't math. Oh, yeah. Um, and at the end of the day, part of what I was thinking is just like, when it comes to using your education or knowledge, mm -hmm. it's not even more so about, like, saying you have the knowledge, but it's wanting to know the shit. If you want to know, exactly. you retain it. It's like, mm -hmm. but... A lot of the time you get don't jobs and stuff because it's what they should do and what they have to learn to do that, exactly. and not because they're actually interested in it. No, particular exactly. Like I took a lot of the fucking um, ethnic studies classes, and I feel like I learned, I retained all of that information because it was shit that I was very much interested yeah. in. Um, just like a lot of civil rights shit and stuff like that, and so I was like very into that, and so I learned that. Dude. But all the shit pertaining to my actual fucking major shit, I don't know anything <laughs> about because I was just doing it because I needed a major, like, I need a, a job, blah, blah, blah. But then the thing is, is we, me and my friends, we all like, graduated for almost a year now, and not one of us are in, like, the field we actually wanted to be in. Dude. Most, half of us, like, half of my friends don't even fucking have jobs, or they're, like, boof-ass jobs. They're still working, you know, customer service jobs after paying a hundred fucking grand for Yo, education it's like, crazy it's ridiculous the cost it's fucking so stupid it's crazy it's insane um and just like living costs are so fucking high right now so simply taking the time off to like work on your fucking education for four years is just like bro if you don't do it as soon as you get done with high school like, the idea of doing it is never is so overwhelming. Like. No, exactly. And I went to community college for, like, my first two and a half years of school. Yeah. Um, and at community college, there's only a 5% rate in California of people getting from community college, transferring, and graduating. 5% of people that go to community college. Because it's so hard to get through. Because people that go to community college tend to not have money. They tend to not have, like, the amenities. Um, they're typically working at the same time. And so it's really fucking hard. And community college isn't any easier than regular 100%. college. That makes you so... That made that just made me sad because it's of what really you just sad. said. You're still in college, my nigga. Okay. You just did a whole two years. Exactly. And, like, and, and, and if you people... did the two years, that means you had to pass the first year. So you actually did the work. And a lot of people take like... 5%. Yeah. And a lot of people take like four to six years to get their associates from community if they do go. And a lot of my friends... Uh, I mean, not a lot, but I had a few of my friends, they, they dropped out of community college and none of them ever went back because it's like you're working and all this shit now. You're constantly fucking broke, even though you're working full time, you barely have any energy or time for yourself. And you're like, I'm going to add five fucking classes to this. No, yeah. How? I can not imagine. Um, and it's, it's fucked because then they're fucked a little bit because they don't have a degree, but. And that's the thing. It's like. I also don't use my degree for most of the stuff that I actually exactly. do. Experience ends up being like experience so, and connections or everything. And that's what I was thinking with all of this is like, even for people who went to college, like with the mindset, if you have to go to college with that mindset being born, a lot of people who were going to college when it first started were people who are already going to get referrals for jobs or could have had a job. You feel me? Exactly. So it was like the same shit was still happening. That give them those connections. It was just more people were going to college as well. So it seems like, you feel me? No, exactly, and that's the truth. So about who you know and what, like, more than it is what you know. And that's what it's made like, my friends you know have discovered. Important. But it's showing the right person that you know it as well. It's like, especially with having degrees that certify you for roles, people are like, yo, I could find 50 people who are certified to do this. What makes you the one? But how do you, do you actually have the knowledge, you know? Because like I said, none of us have actually learned anything. You so half of us don't 
don't actually have any knowledge. And that's and, another thing, which is learning. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, it's uh, quite a fucked little situation. You know, I'm trying to get into event planning, and I'm going to fly into jobs and jobs and jobs and jobs and jobs. Never ending. One that I'm, like, so fucking overqualified for, to be honest. Like, I've had a lot of experience doing it, but it's still not enough because I don't have those fucking connections. And, like, that's my yeah. biggest regret um from college is really not like going Leading into yeah using a lot of the tools that they had to actually get connections no, me and too. like meet um not sponsors but like people like mentors it's like, like mentors the right. and like yeah. exactly yeah um, they just tell you what you should do because the people i know that did that are in much better places no, yeah. like, i i think i fucked up on that but also it's like i was hit with covid i went to community college i only went to my actual university for a year and a half it's just like i who was i about it was so overwhelming house? like how like it's just i had such little time to both like settle in and like optimize the opportunity while trying to actually fucking get through with good grades, you know, like no, community yeah. college, you got to keep your GPA up to transfer if you oh, want to be. Able to, yeah, mo- especially any like UCs or CSUs. That's sad to tell because people be in college, like universities with shitty ass grades and get to stay. Exactly, which is why so many people don't transfer and it's only 5% because you have to have like a 3 5 for a lot of schools, a 3.0 at the bare mo- minimum. And I'm so I'm trying to keep a 3 5 while working 35 hours a week at job. And that's the thing is like, like working full fuck. time. When I was in college, I didn't work full time until my senior year. And even I, then, I, I, like, bro, I like, what? fucking burnt out by my senior year. I worked like, full time my my freshman year, part time my sophomore year, part time my junior year. But I was doing like five days a week nannying my junior year, so it was a lot. Mm. Like halfway through my senior year, I literally was like, I'm fucking done. Anybody and who's I working quit. full forty hours and doing a full course load, it's insane. It's, it's so tiring. It's impossible. Because even if you're not like doing a whole lot, like trying to. Just it actively taking yourself to class to class and being up at the time appointed and then being it's at work and doing work. your job and then having the energy to and consciously dude, work on other shit. No, exactly. Shit and what would happen to me, like, I remember is I had uh, seven to threes shifts on Tuesdays and Thursdays. I'm seven to seven p.m.? Yeah, 7 a.m. to 3 p.m. No, you're have, dead after that. And then I had a, a fucking stats class from 3.30 to 6.30 on Zoom. And I would fucking fall asleep every time. And Even I fucking, if I wasn't asleep, I'm not retaining this. Exactly. And so I almost fucking failed that class because I was so fucking it's that, tired. It's, it's not like, even just because of that. Stats is recomfortable. No. Bro, exactly. I hated that class because at first I got it. And then all of a sudden it just threw me for a loop. And I was like, where no, did I, I get it? Exactly. I got, <laughs> Go I got like, the first test. It was same with like accounting, bro. Both those classes, like first test, I got like a 95. I'm like, oh, I got this. You feel me? Like, I understand and this. And then second test, 42. And I'm yeah. like. Oh. oh. <laughs> yeah, I took stats my junior year, and I had to start like going to extra like sessions, yeah, and try and figure out if I could figure out when to figure out what I was missing. Like, yeah, so no stats. It's a just, mess. Nah. No, I wouldn't pass that class without my producer Kevin. He helped me with so much of that shit, bro. No, nah, look. You don't take a shot for the fact that you're done with school. Nah, for real. No, <laughs> I, I just got stressed out. <laughs> My friends asked me, like, do you guys, do you guys want to go back to school? I was like, bitch, what? That's what I, like, think about now. Is like, there's other things I want to learn. Do I want to go back to school? I want to go back if, if I could just, like, it's just, I don't know what it's going to apply to. I would not go back unless I knew for certain what the fuck I was right doing. Right as soon as I got done. How it was going to help work. me. Yeah. The one thing I'd probably go back for is like a master's in business to and that's what know I'm something like, about something. Because it makes sense. You feel me? Universally. Literally, that's the... Like, I think it's the number one it. most useful degree. Because um, you can do other jobs, but you can also help yourself. <laughs> like No, I regret not doing that. Like, I did comms over business because, honest to God, I was fucking lazy. And I was like, I do not feel like taking all these math classes. And, bruh, I should have just fucking done it. Because maybe I'll be making some money right now. Period. Instead of crying when I have to spend five fifty on juice, you know? Stop it. <laughs> <laughs> nah, no, I hear you, though. Uh, Shouts to adulting. Ow, ow. And growing up and realizing that. Best life. <laughs> like, wait, bro, there's not a job ready for you. Nah, it's fucked. Even if I do get a job, minimum wage, bro, if you just do the math. So if you want to go get an apartment, just say the apartment is $2,000 a month. Yeah. They want you to have two and a half times income 
Exactly. Who the fuck is just averaging six thousand plus dollars a month? No, exactly. It's fucking ridiculous. I work minimum wage at fifteen dollars an hour, my nigga. I'll come home with what about three k? No, exactly. What? Like after my rent and insurance is paid, I got very little money to myself, bro. Like, I try not to even like finish the math after. I, I haven't right. thought about traveling it so long, like. People, my New York homies constantly, because I'm from Brooklyn, they're constantly like, oh, when are you going to come out to New York? When are you going to come? When are you going to give me $800? And she, I was talking to her the day, and she, she did go out and came back, and now she's like, I got to do X, Y, and Z, and I just pay rent. No, exactly. Like, bro, even when the dude look ahead, it's like, That's all right, right, if I leave for this week, two weeks, I'm not making exactly. nothing I'm for this two weeks. Exactly, I'm spending money while not making so, money. So, yeah, I'm right. paid for the trip. So, exactly. When not- I get back, I'm in a hole. Exactly. Right. It's, not, it's not only saving for the trip, it's saving for the week of money that, that you That I'm not made. making, yeah. It's like, bro, I got my tax returns, and I was like, oh, yeah, I'm going to do something fun. Like, I'm going to go on a trip, bro, like, buy myself something cool, like, whatever. I got, like, $700. Nah, that shit went immediately to rent because I got sick so fucking much, bro, and I was out of sick hours. Oh. I'm like, all right. Yeah. All right. <laughs> but this six don't be logistic. No. I'm still in this bitch. No. It's <laughs> hard, bro. But, you know, honestly. This is one thing. I'm broke, but, like, she's my life is good at the same That's time. That's why I'm thinking about, about look, I just pay for where I live at and my yeah. car. Niggas don't even got cars, like. I got running water. I mean, no, exactly. The money is doing what it's supposed to. <laughs> I, I might not be doing what I thought I could have, but the money is literally doing what it's supposed to. That's what I got it for. Yeah. Oh. Um, yeah. That's one thing no, I was trying exactly. to make myself of. Is that at least I'm hitting the boxes that we're supposed to be. No, hitting. precisely. Shit could be worse. I paid rent. So I'll call it a win. You know. No. Yeah. Uh, fuck. Tiring sometimes. God damn. I didn't realize how easy I had it in college. And the thing is, he's still tired as fuck and broke. It's just as simpler. <laughs> At least I can go to the beach occasionally at 11 a.m. on a Tuesday. And the thing is, the time just seemed, it seemed like you had so much more free time. It's like, the schedule was still technically the same, like, but I, of time. I feel like, like you make, I feel like you make that time, especially when you have a community of people around you, people you want to hang with, with you know? Yeah. Um, that's the other thing, like, yeah, friends become, like, hangouts right. become reunions. Uh, this is, yeah. Uh, I haven't seen that in the real homies in so long. So long. Yeah. And from exactly. college, not yeah. since I left college for real, but, like, more than two or three. Yeah, anybody that moved away, I ain't never seen you again. Wait. <laughs> I mean, my best friend in New York, bro, I've seen her twice in the last uh, nine years. Mm, one of my best friends from college moved to New York. I haven't seen him since he graduated. Yeah, yeah. Nah, it's tough, bro. It's very fucking tough. But, you know, got my community here. Got my homies. Mm. Got the when did you start making music? That's a very complicated question. I've been writing music since I was like eight or nine. Um, I started actually the first time I like actually record music was when I was seventeen, but I actually been taking it seriously, like and even I don't even know if I'm really taking it that seriously. But you know, um, <laughs> but relatively seriously, probably a few years ago, probably like four years, like twenty twenty. Is when I like recorded my album with Kev, um, or at least wrote a lot of it and shit. Um, so yeah, I say twenty twenty is when I started to actually like think anything of it. It was hard because I did, you know, my last three years of high school um, in the Bay Area um, and in the suburbs of the Bay. So doing music was not cool. Like it was Dude, not celebrated for real, bro. It's dry as fuck up there. It's boring and and, and sad. Like. Bro, like, these fucking shoes, bro, th- these would have gotten me, like, burnt at the stake um, in my hometown. Like, yeah. it's it's a Lululemon and, like, a Ritzia town kind of vibe. Yeah. Um, I've always been... Like, no, nah, yeah. No, nah, I hear you. I hear you. Everybody I went to school with was wearing Hollister and, yeah. you feel me, the, not just the t-shirts and, no, they had the polos they're like actually abercrombie and fish the bay like. area for me where I, not not the entirety of the bay area don't come for me bay area has um but the suburban parts of it are like anti-drip 
Like, you, like I would get made fun of, like, like, having good fits. It's kind of crazy. Like, and then I moved to L.A., and everybody, like, loved my style. Like, loved the shit I do. Loved, like, the extra. It's because you wasn't supposed to be there. Exactly. It's just, I, I feel like the same. I, like, I just didn't pay attention, and people didn't necessarily, like, girls who knew me yeah. would be like, what are you wearing and shit like that? But it's like, shut up. No, so exactly. it's like, people didn't say it, but now that I think about it... I was from New York. Actually, no, I have a, a homie, we was like this, we still yeah. like this, and he was like, yo, I remember you used to wear all crazy shit, and I was like, this is like two years ago, I was like, what you talking about? And he was like, nigga, he was always like kind of weird, and I was like, really? I was like, I was just, nobody said she was like, bro, and he just started calling out fits that I wore, and I was like, I ain't know that I was leaving impressions in niggas' brains yes. about... Who- but hey, <laughs> I remember, like, so what is that? So it's like, I hear what you're saying about like... You know? doing the shit you were doing wasn't cool no it's hard it's hard and and, you know it was really just coming from new york because in new york like how you be cool popularity ain't really the same because schools are so big my high school's 400 people so there's not really popularity but to be like cool and like well liked like you want to be unique like you want to be unique oh new york yeah Yeah. no nobody wants to see somebody who's like everybody else exactly um and it's just the full opposite from the second everybody's the same everybody wants to be the same like that's that's what makes you cool. Yeah. Following those like things and rules. These are the things that the cool people do. Yeah, and I ain't yeah. been that. I know. I I didn't, live I didn't even know. Like that. Like, <laughs> I didn't know, and I didn't get, and I didn't like that shit. No, no, I, I, no. I didn't even like your shit. I tried. Yeah. I, like, I molded in for a little bit, but right. goddamn, bro, that shit got no style. No, it's just terrible. Yeah. My I, my my little sister, she divulges. When did you start like me. realizing like what people were wearing and trying to wear it, and then realize like, nah, bro, let me get dressed. Um, um, I think, I feel like sophomore year, like when I first moved to the Bay Area, I was like, I did not give a fuck. I stayed doing myself. Um, and junior year too, honestly, and I have pink hair all high school too. So like, I really ain't give a fuck. I had hot pink hair. Um, and I really kept up with that. Um, but I think the hate really got to me like senior year and I was like, all right, I'm done. Like I'm joining the Lululemon crew. Um, and so then I started dressing hella basic. For that year and like my freshman year of college and then when i moved to la um my junior year of college i was like oh i had the drip all along <laughs> and so um yeah turned back into myself no yeah and things been looking up ever since no, you just feel like comfortable when you're outside you just feel different being outside because you know you like i i know i look good like yeah. in like a stylistic way and like i don't know it's it's a good feeling knowing all those people that hated on me are still lacking in drip. <laughs> like y'all ain't got like, no sauce, no stuff. <laughs> y'all try as fuck. No, for sure. That's one thing is is always interesting to look back and yeah. it's like I'm so glad that I stopped holding a regard for any of that. No, for a fuck that. <laughs> it uh, I'm glad that I'm where I'm at and not sitting there with them. But it definitely just hurt me from doing music because all those people that were my fucking ops in high school, I did not want to be posting on social media like my music clown. shit. It's like it's embarrassing. Um, like, I don't know. But then once I moved here and I had a few people like telling me I was good. Um, and I don't know. I feel like I remember this one conversation uh-oh. It's good. It just happened. But this uh, one conversation with um, my homie Wakai, um, and he was staying with me um, out in L.A. Uh, he had kind of, like, heard some of my shit, and he was asking me questions, like, about, like, what I want to do with music and shit. And I, at the time, I was, like, not at all, div- like, divulged in that dream. And so I was, like... You got divulged in that dream. <laughs> so i was like oh like nothing like it's like cool but like i'm not really trying for a career i don't really care and he was like oh like he seemed real bored of me after that (laughs) like like disappointed in me bro (laughs) um and honestly like that conversation really woke me up i was like damn maybe i should be doing something with this like he seemed mad disappointed that i didn't want to do anything with it you know um and he's really fucking talented so like i trust that man's vision um, I've been disappointed when I heard somebody not actually care about their music. Like, uh, yeah. Yo, it's exactly. Damn, you don't. Like cook, cook. Yeah, no, it's it's hard, and especially once I started to get into the community of all these artists that are like building and really trying, yeah. working really hard. 
They don't want to talk to you or care about you if you're if you, not like, serious about yeah, it. He was like, oh, yeah. No, no. So you need to be crazy. serious about it because you got to have that same level of passion as they do. And I sleep in the studio on the floor. What the fuck are you talking about? Exactly, like, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Hey. Uh, so that's just being around a lot of musicians has like really changed my mentality on it. And now, I mean, I'm still at a point where it's like, I'm, I'm fucking working a job, bro. Like, I got my fucking nine to five, so... There's only so much I can do, but no, um, I'm not going to lie and say I'm putting my fucking 100% into it. But also, it's it's just really hard because most of what you're fucking required to do at this point is social media um, and marketing and advertising. Marketing. I, didn't, I didn't sign up to be an artist to be a fucking marketer. Those are not the same thing. I want to make art. <laughs> I want to make music. I want to write. I want to work with other people. But, like, the entire side of having to have, you know, 25,000 followers on each social media, keep up to date with each one, be producing different media for each one. It's fucking exhausting and just not really what I'm interested in doing. So it puts me at a tough spot of, like, yeah, I'm working in terms of, like, creating art and expanding my art and getting better at being an artist. But it's so hard for me to be a better social media marketer sometimes just because I don't give a fuck about it. And then also, just in L.A., I find, you know, we were kind of talking about it earlier, um, just that there is this big community of artists that are all supporting one another, um, and that's, like, your main audiences and, like, the main networking you do is with other fucking artists that are struggling, and we're all essentially just passing around the same fucking $10 to go to each other's shows, to buy each other's merch, to support one another so that we can guarantee their support, but at the end of the day, you're actually getting no support because you're putting it right back out. And so it's, um, it's a fucked little situation, and it's hard sometimes to see where exactly yeah where the growth is going to be where the success lies how it's a possibility you know um sometimes it's just like bleak as fuck watching it especially when you meet artists that are 10 times more talented than yourself and people that are way more driven and way more hardworking, and they're fucking struggling and they aren't making it i hear you then. And they have like damn yeah, bro <laughs> i guess it's not just me no and i'm like if they can't do no, it yeah where does that put me you know, uh, but I feel like that's just when you have to become strategic. No, definitely. Yeah, you got to figure out, all right, what's the strategy for me? And sometimes it's not now, you feel me? Sometimes you have to figure out the recipe yeah. for you, you feel me? Just by trying, all right, this is one thing, this is another thing. And there's really, like, not just one way. Because, like, yeah, you could say you do make content on social media but you don't make a whole bunch of different music but you make enough videos you got six songs and you make a bunch of videos for them and the videos do well but only two of the songs are any good yeah now what as opposed to the artist who has 20 great songs and no videos you feel me so it's a matter of getting that right it's getting that recipe. balance and yeah. yeah no exactly and also like figuring out what your individual recipe is too because i feel like everybody got a different like online presence no, uh, a different personality. Um, where you're gonna sell it from yeah um and that's like another thing is i'm starting to figure out why i'm kind of expanding and trying to see um what other genres of music like would land like best with an audience um because as much as i love my slow depressing r&b music it's what <laughs> it's what i'm naturally atoned to uh i don't know my i so i write music and i just want to come out sad you know very juice world with it sometimes but um you know mac miller my biggest inspiration for a reason but I feel like a lot of what sells is not depressing fucking music. There's a niche for it. Oh, yeah. Like, there's the Billie Eilish niche, but even Billie, like, she got famous initially for making sad music, but she's branched out into a bunch of other shit. Stuff, yeah. Um, and that's kind of what sells a lot better a lot of the time. And trying to get up as an R&B artist is really difficult because it's not so attention-grabbing. It's, like, soulful and, yeah. like, relatable to people. Unless you do pop R&B. But it's not so in your fucking face. Yeah. And so, um, that's why all the really popular um, R&B artists, especially female artists that are doing really well, um, are fucking hot as fuck, and that's how they got famous, you know? Really, to be honest. Like, that, yes, they're very talented, but, like, they also had to be extremely fucking beautiful. And... 
it's just that's a hard space to work yourself up in. So there's only so much of an audience. And who the fuck really buys tickets to go sit in a fucking seat and watch an R&B concert? Not not many people. That's only your super fans. So it takes a while to even make money from fucking touring. Um, and so I'm trying to branch into other shit just because I've learned since I've been performing a lot more throughout the last like year. It's hard to perform like sad shit. Like people might be impressed with my voice, my runs, but like it's not enough to like perform to, you know? It's impressive the first time for people, but will they come back for it? Well, it's until you get the right audience, though, because it's like, I mean, I don't know. I don't know about certain artists, like, backstory. You feel me? How they even build a following. You feel me? Who have a similar sound. It's like, were they performing or did somebody? I don't, I don't, I don't know. Yeah. But there's definitely an audience. It's a matter of how to find them. I don't even know how to fucking find it. I... But that's something someone said to me. It was mm-hmm. like, you know, we can't perform that song. I was like, huh? I, he was like, it wouldn't do. It's not a bad song, but, and I was it just, just like, won't perform well. You're not wrong, but, so I fucking made it. <laughs> I, yeah, I didn't make my- and, and that's why I feel like I need to find my audience through other kind of genres and yeah. other more relatable, the lead like, to that. Uh, more just like, easy to listen to music yeah something that's easier to lean into exactly and then i can drop my depressing shit and get streams on it because they follow me and maybe i can switch over that audience but you kind of have to start with something and i'm like attention getting yeah unfortunately sad little songs ain't gonna do it but you know one thing though if it's a song about like love yeah you might have a chance. No, and most of them are. And, you know, there's there's always a chance. It's just a lot harder to sell it. Just it's that. like trying to uh, trying to think of, uh, like, what kind of videos and content you're going to do for it is, is difficult. I feel you there for social media. Because there's, there's just not a, there's not a lot of avenues you can go other than the sappy avenue. Um, or sex sells. Like, that's really, like, how you go about it in the R&B world, to be honest. Like, no, that's... It's been... If you really look at it with any genre of music, really, that's been, like, 50% of the marketing. 100%. Especially if it's a female artist. Mm-hmm. Like... Yeah. Sex sells. And even with men artists, like... Uh, uh, Usher is fire. You feel me? Usher Every... Usher's Chris been... Brown? The only... The only reason Chris Brown hasn't been canceled 11 separate times is because that man is fine. <laughs> and the music industry really will put a lot on you being fine, you know? If you're fine, you can, you can just pass through a lot. And, yeah, uh, it's, it's a tough thing trying to figure out how you're going to get your shit recognized for your art. Like, and only so many artists have done it. You know, Frank Ocean and a few select others um, have gotten their art out there without, you know, having some broader image yeah. connected to it. Um, her did that before, you know, she like revealed herself and she still is not at the front right, of her image right. in a way. Her music is her image. Right. Um, but it's really rare, really difficult. And it's typically you kind of like have a way into the industry from the side. You come in normally as a writer and shit, and then it turns into other things. Right. Um, it's hard. <laughs> I was about to say something. <laughs> Literally, I had a question. Oh, yes. You listed a couple of different artists. Who are some of your biggest influences? Uh, Mac Miller was definitely my number one, as we've discussed him a lot for a reason. He's he's my everything. Got the swimming CD locked in, in my car all the time. Also mentioned Michael Jackson. I listen to a lot, um, and he's kind of a lot of my um, influence in, t- in terms of like how to make shit way more performative and fun to listen to because i can listen to off the wall and thriller and everybody else in the u.s apparently can too we can all listen to them 30 fucking times you know no. that it's I'm never sure. ending um and so to how how to attain that is like one of my biggest questions uh lana del rey was one like one of my big influences um growing up like just from like high school um, she's an incredible writer. Um, and then a lot of, like, honestly, like, random shit. Like, I listen to Steel Pulse a lot, which is, like, a reggae band growing up. Um, I listen to a lot of reggae. A lot of random fucking rock shit that my dad listened to. He listens to a lot of, like, weird, obscure shit. We listen to, um, The Shins a lot. Um, 
And then my older sister, she put me onto a lot of like um alt and indie and rock shit. Um so like through her I started listening to um like Black Keys and all those related little sub sub bands. <laughs> um but yeah, I feel like my um my music tastes are really fucking random and large and I've gone through so many different phases of music. Um, hence why I'm involved in so many fucking scenes and communities. So it's really fucking hard to pinpoint what my biggest influences are because they're all over the place. Oh, a special shout out to Amy Winehouse, though. Um, oh. It's like my biggest my comparison, I guess. So, uh, For real? Yeah. And I'm going to have to like, watch you perform now and think about that. Because I've never... Not to say it's not true. It's like, I fuck with Amy Winehouse and I fuck with you, but I've never, like... It's definitely my biggest comparison. I don't know. Um, but yeah, she, I, she definitely is a big big one for me. Her discography is just so small because it's, it was cut so short, you know? That's so part, yeah. There's only so much to listen Did to. Did you see a documentary? I haven't seen it yet. Oh, the documentary? Yes. Yeah. There's a new movie coming out, the biopic, and I already... I don't want to see it. yeah. yeah. I used to suck him for watching stuff like that, but it was just all when I came upstairs. No, I've seen it. It's sad. It's yeah. good, but uh, yeah, sad. Her husband fucked her. He got to so. Yeah. Queen. Yeah. Um, <laughs> that's one thing I, I find to be a common trend amongst all my favorite artists. They're very rarely living. Um. <laughs> it's the way you said it, more so than what you said. Frank Sinatra, too. I listened to a lot of big band growing up. Like, I was obsessed with Frank Sinatra, and I listened to a lot of him. He's a classic. Um, so, weirdly, I would, I would have to say he's one of my big influences. He, I never think about his music influencing my music, but just, like, the fact that he's still a staple. He's just, I mean, he, it's just pop music, you know, it's just like era by era. And I, he was his, he was the Michael Jackson of his time, of his time, you know, <laughs> I never even thought about it saying it was just another version of pop music. Yeah. So, so every time, has, every pop, pop music, music you yeah, know, exactly. And it's okay. interesting okay. right now, um, watching it change because hip hop was the pop music Yeah. throughout the thousands. I feel like thousands kind of had like a weird, Oh, what happened? Let's see. Oh, I think it's still going. I'm not sure. Okay, yeah. Cool. Um, wait, what was I saying? Talking about, uh, hip-hop and pop. Oh, yeah. Um, uh, but yeah, um, in the thousands, I feel like there was, a, like, actually a lot of EDM, uh, influence. If you listen to all of Rihanna's old music, it's, like, literally, like, all EDM shit. But there was rap verses in pretty much every pop song, but it was just verses. And then I feel like in the tens, we saw rap songs be the pop music. And now that's, that's changing, bro. Hip-hop is, like, fucking difficult now, so many of the biggest artists, I feel like, have kind of fallen off. They're nowhere to be seen anymore. Um, people that were so big in 2016, 17. It was just because like, the something happened? didn't have, like, a longevity built into the artistry. Because it was, I made a hot sound or I had a hot song. And even before 2016, it was around that time. Actually, no, it was 2016. Yeah. I was sitting in the house in uh, the country music channel came up and I just sat there for a second. I was like, hey, friend, like yeah, let me see. I was rolling. Cause right now we got Atlanta at the peak of, you feel me? Yeah. I'm listening to not even just the like song, but the music. Yeah. I'm like, bro, these drums definitely sound like it could be on any song from the Migos or Future right no, exactly. now. Exactly, it's it's getting to a bleak point of not there's not enough new. Yeah. You know, at the at that time, take, what's it was the new. Most added you know, in as an element. Um, so many of those fucking rappers were like a really an anomaly in the way. No, that and their sound beat. was. And what they did. Different. It's new, but now it's now it's over. But instead so of now I feel like finding something to do different, they just started adapting bits of what's popping until there's not exactly sound no more and that's why i feel like it's going back into edm in a big way you know we see it with fred again like baby keem's last three songs were fucking fred again songs like baby keem and all these other rappers are starting to do all these um fucking um songs collaborated with uh djs yeah and it's like it's super cool. It's, I mean, it's, 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 it's a it's new a thing. Crowd. It's like different beats, you know, yeah. with that shit. Um, 
and it's been the the EDM scene is blowing the fuck up. Like all these fucking um, festivals, I go to a lot of them. You know, I went to like EDC Las Vegas and EDC Orlando, which are like some of the biggest ones. Um, and it's becoming just super popular. Um, so I think that's gonna be like the next the next big fucking thing. Um, and that's kind of why I'm trying to branch into it right now. <laughs> The thing is, it's already been around, so it's like it's been around with like a, a with like a cult a following, but it's it's you with the like radio it's switch. More mainstream. It's the radio switch. See, exactly. I guess I was just around a lot of people who were already just like, I guess weird. It's, it's exactly. Weird. It's been a scene, so especially like within how, artists how and shit. It was. It's it's totally. I didn't listen to it, but I knew so many people that I just figured. But mm-hmm. it's like. I listened to rap, bro, like, so it wasn't because, I just figured it was me, not people, and so, no, I think it's, people it's, are saying, oh, it's taking off, and my roommates, same, they go to all these shit, mm-hmm. every time there's something happening, and they've been getting crazy, worse, that's what I'm listening they, to, yeah, and it's big complaints from the people that have been around it for a long time, for, like, the community that's been existing, because, what, saying have, that we were already here, well, it's just that there's rules within the, or not really rules, just but when it comes to, like, sounds, not even without without about sound, but really about like community and the way you treat each other at like live things. Oh. So like, um, at festivals, there's something called plur, which is peace, love, unity, and respect, and like it's a huge thing in the rave scene. And it basically it's just like treat each other really well. Yeah, Everybody community. gives each other a lot of space. You don't have to fucking shove through to get to a, the front of the stage at an EDM concert. You just ask people, you say, hey, please, thank you. And everyone gives each other room because everyone's headbanging and no one wants to slam their heads together. Right. So there's always space. Yeah. Um, it's just a very different, like, that level of is. respect in the community. Yes, yeah, nothing. Like, like Rolling Loud, I went to just the Sunday because I was like, I can't even deal with right. three days of dealing with asphalt after being to used to only going to, like, EDM festivals in recent yeah. years. Because I used to go to Rolling Loud and o- Outside Lands and all those other festivals. Once I went to one fucking EDM festival, I was like, Man. never again. Never again. I'm never, ever, ever dealing with that ever again. I remember being uh, stressed and going home and just feeling like I got done to like with two or Exactly. Days. But now, since it's been blowing up a lot more, a lot, a lot of people are coming to the festival without knowing those kinds of expectations and rules. Um, and it's kind of fucking it up a little bit for all the people that are like there to care. Like, um, and so it's really just about teaching a lot of those newcomers and like trying to like welcome them in. But like. Yeah, it's definitely blowing up because it's changing. Oh, for sure. I remember there was a bunch of, uh, like, EDM rap. I'm trying to remember the rapper. There's a lot of British uh, EDM rap lately, too. Well, I'm, this is, like, really in it. 2013. I can't think of who it was, but it didn't, like, keep going. I'm thinking of a specific show I was at where the dude I'm thinking of performed. He was too and early. easy performed. Oh, yeah, because I feel like g he kind of has been on that. Um, but, yeah. At that point, he was not. He was the Bay. He was, you feel me? Like, this nigga sounded like where he was from on that That's one. So funny. And I would, I don't even know how I found him. Actually, no, websites, like, uh, we were mixtape websites and music sites, like. It's so funny to me that at one point, g was, like, popping, popping. Like, he's, I feel like he's been viewed as so cringe since, <laughs> like, I've known He's corny as hell. Exactly, but the fact that he was, like, cool at some point is hilarious to me. And he's also just, like, cringe as hell online. Like, his, like, presence, the things he I says and does, he is embarrassing. I actually met so that corny. nigga. I dapped him up. That's fire. It was the first time I was ever crossfaded. That's hilarious. I walked up on him literally upside down. <laughs> my head was parallel to my hip because I was, like, Oh my god, I couldn't believe that's who it was. I was like, that's so fucking funny. Oh, <laughs> this nigga just is just like, yo. <laughs> yeah, another one of these motherfuckers. Uh, I was like, yo, I just, I fanned out hard as fuck. That's so hard. funny. One and only time I can completely that's say that I fanned out, I was like, yo, bro. What's up, bro? Like, I love your music. I, I have sparring. I showed this nigga. I got all your shit, bro. I had all his like mixtapes at that time on my iPod. This yeah. iPod, nigga. <laughs> oh, I took out all my old iPods the other day and turned them on just to look at my old music. I ran on my ass. I wish I had an iPod. I have all mine. I got a first gen one, bro. Oh. With all my dad's old music, it has a thousand songs on it. The one I got from my dad. It's a fucking amazing. The big brick one. Oh yeah. 
And it's got all one the, before got, it wasn't a video. It got all the fucking OG Snoop Dogg music on it. Nah. Snoop has released some shit ass music. I, I will never <laughs> forget this one song that I listened to. I, I remember showing all my friends on the school bus when I was like seven years old. And it was called Suck Me. And it was Suck Me, Fuck Me, Now Get Down on Your Knees and Fuck Me. And truly terrible songs, bro. That whole album, ass. But I thought it was the shit when I was a kid because I was like this yeah, excited. You listen to a lot of old rap. Oh, it's bad. You'd be like, what the fuck? It's bad. Not only is it offensive it's to me personally like, as a woman, they actually talk but about crazy. Like, yeah. Niggas say people like say crazy shit now. Nah. People do say crazy shit now, but... but not quite. Especially because rap is mainstream crazy. now. Like, it was so far from being mainstream at the time that, that you could really say whatever the fuck you wanted because your audience was, like, people that were there for the outlandish because no. yeah. hip-hop was just, you know... Seen as outlandish. Yeah, but. out of pocket shit. I had a homie that I actually learned how to engineer from. It was an older, older dude, and he was yeah. ah, ah. It's like when the rapper say something crazy. He's a white dude. Like he, he's you would never guess he spent his time eighty percent with rappers. No, for it was him. like he's not like a nerd, but you just wouldn't think that he was hanging out with rappers. Mm-hmm. And he was like, ah, I was like. I like like niggas like Jelly Roll. Like he didn't say niggas, but I like like people like Jelly Roll, like Fat Bastard. Like people say off the wall shit. That's what I really Bro, like. That's one thing Ray that's Ford. so funny to me that people don't know is Jelly Roll's OG music. They only know <laughs> they only know him for his kind of music. No, he's like, he's like a sweetheart. It's not for real. Just, I don't even know his country music. Do you not know? No. Oh, so he's, he's, he's he's like blown up in like this like country music scene it's so funny That's he got beautiful. he got clean That's with his beautiful. wife like three years ago he he married the, his favorite hooker um but she bunny's the best like i uh, love you bunny no disrespect um most fire hooker ever but you know um they've been married for a while now and clean and people just don't they don't know about uh his OG music is outlandish, crazy fucking shit. When I saw him come up on my TikTok, like accepting his fucking speech at the CMAs, I was like, "This can't be the same Jelly Roll that I knew about five years ago." Nah, this can't be the Jelly Roll I saw on Vine. Nah, like <laughs> insane. Did not know he was a country singer. Now, a cr- a crazy. I guess to switch over his pop. No, I saw one of his old videos come up on my feed. I was like, "Yeah, this, this is what I knew." To being cracked the fuck out, saying some crazy shit. Oh, mm. Mm-hmm. I feel like it's really anybody's game at this point in music. There's really like the more we continue with moguls falling off, Jay Z's even in question. You feel me? Is like Fifty Cent doesn't even really. Oh no, Jay Z next. Like Jay Z way. Jay Z's way too connected to Diddy. Uh, I don't have nothing to say. Uh, he's real connected to Diddy, so it's the question. The landscape of music is gonna have to change just because the people whose money is going into music is not gonna be there to do it. So other niggas is gonna have at least a little bit of opportunity to buy something. Yeah, you feel me? Because it's not already bought up. No, I'm 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 so interested to see though if Jay Z falls off and like get really gets put down the gutter like Diddy. Uh, because you know he probably related, you know Epstein. Everybody been on the plane situation. And this um, is the reason why I wonder if that's going to affect the offset. Is because, bro, listen, they live together. Leave it at that. Come on now. How I much mean, is hiding? People... How much is hidden? How much is hidden? Even if it's hidden, you have suspicions, and your suspicions, your suspicions and suspicions probably didn't go fully inspected because you didn't want the truth at the bare minimum. I look, I, fuck Beyonce. <laughs> I realize she, you know, was very much groomed by that man. You feel me as well, though? That's another reason to say, like, even if you don't want to claim any knowledge or participation, yeah. unfortunately, the whole situation is makes it sad in that aspect. But no, that's part of the truth, 100% right there, too, which is another reason why I just... No, and people are finally in discussions about it. And I'm like, I've been thinking this was weird since I was a fucking kid. I don't know how Same. nobody thought it was strange Same, that Same. he got with her at 31 when she was 18 and he knew her since she was 16 and they got together the second she turned 18. Wow, it all you know weird. they were fucking beforehand. 
<laughs> um, like, and it's been like that in the industry for a long time. That's the thing. These old ass men fucking and with even if young. Even listening women. to music, it was saying like fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. You feel me? Was yeah. Okay, like no. So yeah, nah. Just the whole landscape of music is up for grabs in a, a short period of time. So one niggas is dying. For me, Mac left a hole is not have been filled, in my opinion. Even with I don't, even, I don't know that it ever will be filled. I'm be so but there's room. A musician of his sound for similar sounds. Just the his whole acoustic side and like that whole chill like side as a mainstream rapper. I don't feel like anyone has the closest. Close. The closest people I put are people that he was really close to. You feel me? That he respected on right. his Anderson Pat, right. people like that. And there, he's not a rapper. You, I want rappers who can do it. You feel me? It's Anderson, what's his name? Ty Dolly Sign. Mm-hmm. They still got that same vibe, that groove. Even Kid Cudi can. You feel me? But it's like no one new has came. Well, close I think I think something different about Mac compared to all those fucking artists is like, I mean, Anderson Pack. I was he he eat it up on drums, but he's nice. But Mac Miller, like he played so many fucking instruments. He was a, a fantastic instrumentalist. Yeah. Um, and he just had so many fucking different lanes of music, you know, um, from Good I Am to Swimming to Faces. Those are three oh, wildly that. different things. Like, that delic. That's like that shit right there. No, exactly. Yeah. Like every like. Every fucking album is like so. Red Dot Music with mm-hmm. uh, Bronson. What is his name? Action, Action Bronson? Bronson. Yeah, I love Action Bronson. Oh, he does man. not get enough fucking credit yeah, in the industry. Dirty. He's dirty. He eats. And that song with him and uh, Earl on that album, I literally listened to that song for like three hours straight on repeat. Earl Sweatshirt, another one who ain't never get his flowers. That was just something I'm about to say with Mac like leaving. I feel like certain artists also just aren't. At that same, like, you feel me? It's like, you know, well, Mac it? also yeah. came in at the right time because I feel like he came in as hip hop was really blowing up and like becoming more mainstream. So he became this like important leg in the music industry. But I mean, Mac was never even known like he, he has been since he since he died pre pre dead, you know, and that's been true for a lot of artists, Peep, Mac. Eggs. Yeah, I didn't really like. Uh, the only that. one I wouldn't say it's so true with is Juice. I actually think Juice was more famous before he died, and I actually think he's gotten less famous since he died, is which it? which is different. I don't feel like he's an outlier to everybody else. But like, it's as most of the people who knew him already was on the shit, and now they want new shit. But like, peep people just like I didn't even hear all the little. Like, he was shit. small enough that people could go in and, and find new shit. shit. And with Mac, now there's never new ending shit. new shit because yeah, his yeah. discography is fucking huge. It takes so yeah. long. And if you really, if thing. you want to be for real, Mike Mac, Mac had a ten year run. You oh, long, so, yeah. Like he he put in a legwork to be able to have reached. Like I was listening to Mac when I was in high school. Yeah. The first time I was like listening to a Mac Miller song, I had to be like seventeen. Yeah, because kids came out a long fucking time ago. A long time ago. I'm going to say 2008. I want to say like my sophomore year of school is when this nigga had that Donald Trump song. And that was like 2009. Exactly. So, exactly. Yeah, so he did his 10-year run. Long before. time. Yeah, he left us, but... Shot to Mac. Oh, with that, I think we call it an episode. Hell yeah. Um, Thank y'all for tuning in. Yes. Thank you for coming. Thank sharing. you for having me. I oh, appreciate course, it. I appreciate the space and the socket. Oh, great conversation. Oh, my name's Chuck. We got Meridel, Meridith. Hell yeah. Get ready for our album to come out. Oh, um, yeah. And Man. be blessed. <laughs> All right, see y'all. I'm, I'm really interested in what this is about to be.